Thank you. Um, our last speaker will be Bob Jones. He'll be talking about activism with love. Good afternoon. Could have been a little warmer, a little sunnier, but we got what we got, right? So uh, I was a very angry anti-war activist after 9-11. Um, I hated the government, um, was very frustrated about progress, and um, I, I just I couldn't stop being frustrated and angry, and um, I found my friends started to avoid me. They didn't want to hear it, you know? It was just like, go away, you've said that a hundred times, but you're not doing any good. So eventually I dropped out of being an activist, um, <clears throat> but then I, a little later I decided that maybe I could do it a different way. Maybe I could change my attitude. So this is about me changing my attitude and see if some of this might help with you. I got inspiration from Gandhi. Um, one of his favorite sayings, as we all know, is we need to be the change we want to see in the world. So I was trying to change the world, save the world, but I really hadn't looked inside. And I wondered, you know, could I change inside? Could I change my attitude? And would that help me with activism? So here are three practices that I finally adopted uh, that were basically words of wisdom from Gandhi and King. One is to practice love. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr led the fight against racism and for civil rights with great love. He said, I'm convinced that love is the most durable power in the world. Love is an absolute necessity for survival of our civilization. To return hate for hate does nothing but intensify the existence of evil in the universe. We need to radiate love to each other, not hate and fear. Code Pink also echoes some of that same language in their literature. I believe they say we need to act out of radical love. Do we have any Code Pink fans or people here? Yay, all right. <laughs> um, the second thing is to practice compassion and kindness for everyone, for all life, for all sentient beings. And the third is to practice being more peaceful. That seems like it would be easy, but uh, I was not being peaceful at all. Gandhi said, there's no path to peace. Peace is the path. And it took me a while to get my mind around that. I think we really want peace, or we say we want peace, but I question, do we really? I mean, there's a lot of violence in America, and in Americans, we're attracted to violence. If you don't believe that, do a search on Netflix for movies and count how many of those movies are violent. I eventually decided to stop watching violent movies because it was, it was messing with my head. Uh, and I learned, I basically needed to learn to be more peaceful over time and try to radiate that sense of peace to others. One of the challenges I find is to hold a view of the world being peaceful. You know, in a country that has endless wars, it's pretty hard to get that into our mindset, but we have to do it. So to me, there's real power in these practices. Those in charge want us to be afraid. They want to separate us, pit us against each other. But if we are full of love, have peaceful intentions, and are fearless, they can't stop us. They can't hurt us. That's why we have to keep going uh, with that attitude in mind, at least for myself. Buckminster Fuller said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. You need to, to change something, you need to build a new model. Uh, makes the existing model obsolete. So maybe this is a new model for us to follow. Can we turn things around? Can we end the endless wars? Nobody knows that. But we have to make the effort to change things if we want a viable future for our children, for all children. I'll end with Margaret Mead's quote that most of you are familiar with. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens 
can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Now, this, this is a medium-sized group, but there's a lot of us out there. We're global citizens, and there's, there's a lot of citizens in the world that want peace. People in Iran want peace. So um, you got to figure, we outnumber those in power, what, 100,000 to one? Something like that. So we are powerful beings, and we can achieve peace together. Let's do it. Thank you.